Well, yeah, I, I think the first time that I saw um, Mission Impossible, that was a very definitive moment in my life because uh, I realized that someone actually had to think this whole thing up. And um, I saw it a few times with my parents, and they're not that big of movie buffs, so I, for them to even go see a movie is always kind of a giant feat. Um, and then, yeah, the, I think that was the biggest moment. Um, I mean, I, I watched a lot of movies growing up, but it wasn't until I started sort of seeing a lot of independent film that I had like more of a sort of visceral, sort of personal reaction to it. Um, and I don't know, I, like I watched a lot of like Hal Hartley films, and I remember the first time I saw sort of high art, and I'd never really seen a sex scene between two women that was sort of like so intimate and sort of vulnerable. Um, and it wasn't really until I started watching, I guess, independent film that I saw things that touched upon like the human connection and interaction as sort of vividly and specifically as sort of those films. I don't know, I have a lot of like photographers that I like a lot. I'm like really interested in sort of Helen Van Meen and her portraits of sort of young girls sort of with like natural sunlight hitting their faces were like big influences on my film and Renneke Dykstra, um, like sort of photographers that capture sort of young women like on the cusp of adulthood and um, filmmakers that like like Catherine Briot and Maurice Pilat and like I guess filmmakers who sort of take a radical approach to sex and sexuality. Uh, yeah, I agree about those two filmmakers, but also um, I'm a big fan of Joyce Carol Oates and I made a short based on one of her short stories, but um, I'm a fan of how prolific she is actually and just the amount of work that she's able to put out there that's of a certain quality level and I, I try and um, emulate that. <laughs> I'm trying to. <laughs> I feel like I, that desire was something that I sort of came to sort of over time when I wanted to like reach a broader audience and um, I think that like I didn't grow up with a camcorder and I never had like that kind of access to technology. So for me it came later in life, like, you know, in my mid-twenties where I was just like sort of started asking myself like, can I do this? And it wasn't something that I ever, you know, thought I would be able to do. Yeah, I, I kind of feel the same way. Um, I certainly wasn't one of those you know, those kids you hear of, or know, everyone knows one of those kids who is always holding, you know, a camera and making home movies. And, yeah, I never um, made a skate video. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I make films for myself. That's who they're for. <laughs> yeah, I make films because I enjoy the process and then hope that somebody will respond to them, I guess. Um, I don't know. I mean, I think that um, they're not specifically like for a female audience, and I would like hope that they have appealed to a mixed gendered audience, but um, they are definitely trying to sort of tap into a female experience that isn't often represented on camera or on screen. I have two pieces of advice. The first being watch a movie a day, and the second being that um, don't be afraid to fail. Yeah, I think, you know, don't be afraid to fail is like the most important one because I think it's a really steep learning curve and there's so many skills that go into making and directing and writing a film that you can't possibly have them all developed the first time you do it. And yeah, I think it's good uh, to go and like even watch like online on YouTube, like Roman Polanski's first short films are on there. And the first one I think is called The Murderer or something. <laughs> and if you go and you go and watch those films, like you see the progression of a voice and a filmmaker and a vision. And it, you know, everybody starts somewhere.
I think for me it's, it's doing something unconventional. For a teacher, it was uh, making a film that forced the audience to relate to a character who was doing something that is pretty universally considered, you know, not acceptable. And um, uh, in this next film, it's about, um, again, sympathizing with a character who beats up her boyfriend. <laughs> and then after that, it's a, about uh, a, a hitchhiker who is also a serial killer. So I think, I think it's just that fun of how can you manipulate kind of audience expectation and, and not just that, but kind of manipulate the language of cinema too. I think I'm interested in films that are radical and gritty, but also sort of personal and have heart. And that's what I'm like attracted to in films. And that's sort of what I guess I'm sort of inspired to try and make. You know, we both really wanted to come to IU and screen our films because when we saw the kind of work that the IU cinema was programming, we were like absolutely like blown away. And we were like, why did this exist <laughs> when we were at IU? And if it had, we both would have like come out of it probably wanting to be filmmakers. <laughs> Much earlier. <laughs> Much process, earlier. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> um, I think we both had that sort of you know, moment of just being like totally in awe. Yeah, it's incredible that you guys have here. Yeah, yeah. it's like an incredible resource and the fact that students have access to both amazing films and filmmakers is something that, you know, I, I envy.